Hello, and welcome to another episode of How to Get Started in IT. I'm Mike Roderick, and today I'm talking about how to prepare for your first Microsoft exam. So today we're going to be talking about preparing for your first Microsoft exam. Now the first thing you'll need to do is decide what an exam it is you're going to be preparing for. In the past, Microsoft certifications were technology-based. Client operating system, server operating system, SQL, Exchange, things like that. But today, Microsoft certifications are role-based, so the decision process is a little bit different. You really need to think about where it is you plan to be. What role are you going to be holding? Are you going to be a cloud administrator, uh, on-premise administrator, you know, which way are you going? And that's going to help you figure out what exam you need to take. Now, once you've decided what exam you want to take, you would begin preparing for that, start studying. First thing I would do, or I would recommend, is to get the exam objectives, right? Go to the source itself, go to Microsoft, find the web page that talks about that particular certification, and they're going to list the exam objectives. These are all the topics that you need to be familiar with in order to be successful on the exam, right? So get those objectives and just start going through them one by one, checking them off. Say, okay, I need to learn this. Once you feel comfortable with that topic, check it off, move on to the next objective and work your way through those objectives. Now, how do you learn about each one of those objectives? You get several choices, right? First, you can go to, say, Microsoft Learn. Microsoft has some great resources on their website uh, at Microsoft Learn, learning.microsoft.com. Uh, check those out because they've got learning tracks that are geared towards teaching you what you need to know for those different exams. You can get books. Uh, I love getting a nice old-fashioned book in my hand and sitting back and reading that. Or maybe you're more electronic and you want to get out your uh, e-reader and obtain a copy of the book that way. Either one works. Uh, or you can do some online training, someplace like itpro.tv, right? Where you can jump into our course library and you can have a, a vast amount of resources at your fingertips. You can watch our videos, learn about it. You can jump into the forums and ask questions. Uh, and that's one of the things you really should look for is you, you want to be able to ask questions, right? Because as you're learning these new technologies and you're reading about it, some of it might, might not make sense. And having somebody that knows about it and you can ask questions is going to be a big help. All right? And you're also going to want to try to play with the technology. Microsoft exams are, uh, it's a good way to say it, you know, and when they're very, um, you need to understand the technology, not just definitions. You need to be familiar with how it works because some of their exams will give you the opportunity to perform a task, right, rather than just ask a question about it. So you might have read up on it and understand it, but if you've never done it, you might feel a little pressure when you get in that booth. So take the time to, if you're going to study Azure, for example, Go out to Azure, sign up for a free trial. It doesn't cost you any money, and you can play with that technology. And as you're watching one of our courses, you can jump over and you can test it out, try it out for yourself. It's really going to help you understand what it is you're learning about uh, and, and help enforce that knowledge uh, and help you prepare for that exam. Now, once you've gone through the training, whether that's book reading or online training, and most likely a combination of, the next thing you want to do is validate your knowledge, right? You need to make sure that you do understand those topics. So best way to do that is practice test, right? And you can get practice tests in several different locations. A lot of times when you buy books, they'll come with a free practice exam. Or if you get an online resource, it might come with that. For example, itpro.tv in our subscription that comes with practice exams. Or you can go straight to the vendor like Kaplan or Measure Up, and you can buy a practice test through them. But this is going to give you a chance to really validate that knowledge that you've obtained as you've been preparing for that exam. It's going to do that as well as build your confidence, right? When you go into that booth, you're going to say, I know this stuff, right? I feel confident because I did well on that practice exam. Now, let's talk about that practice exam itself. When you take that practice exam, really, you know, one, take your time, read the question, read all of the answers, and then answer the question. And once you've finished that, I want you to go back and review. Most of those practice tests will not only tell you what answer is right, and obviously the other answers are going to be wrong, but they'll tell you why that answer is right. And they'll tell you why the other answers are wrong. And you can learn so much from that, right? Um, so take the time to really go through the results of your practice. Don't just go, oh, I passed or I failed, and then move on and take the test again. One of the things I see people doing a lot is 
taking the test over and over and over and over again, back to back. And what happens is you're really just memorizing those test questions. And so by the after you've taken it 30 times, you're doing really well. But if you don't get the exact same questions on the exam, you might not do as well, right? So take an exam, take one of those practice tests, go through it, and anything you missed or you weren't sure about, stop and go study and learn up on it, right? Study up on that and, and, and get that knowledge that you need. And then once you've done that for a few of the topics that you didn't do so well on, go back and take that practice test again and use that test not only to validate your knowledge, but to tell you where you need to spend your time studying. I think this will make you a better test taker and give you more success once you get into that actual booth. Right? Now, once you've validated your knowledge, you feel confident, you're able to look at all those objectives and say, yep, I know that, I know that, I feel good about that, you're doing well on the practice exam, uh, and I do want to go back and say, take as many practice tests as you can from different vendors if you can, right? Or save one vendor to where you're really ready, you think you're good, take one more practice test that you've never seen before. It can really, again, prove this to yourself that you know the information as well as build that confidence. Now, once you've validated your information and you feel like you're ready to take that exam, the next thing is going to be to schedule the exam. Most of the places will require some type of voucher. You can usually buy that through the vendor itself. Like for Microsoft exams, that's gonna be Pearson View. You might buy that directly through Pearson View. You might, be, you might go to Microsoft, buy that. Um, some practice exams will give you discounts on vouchers, but you'll need to take a voucher, get a voucher, and then head over to Pearson View to register for the exam. There you'll be able to locate a testing center that is close to you uh, or in your area. You'll get the hours on those testing centers. You will have to go back and make a Microsoft Learning profile. Once you get to Pearson View site, you'll see that it's going to require you to first create a learning profile. This is going to give you an MCID that you'll then use for all of your future exams so that it all falls under one account. So you can have that transcript of all the different exams that you've taken and passed. So you create your learning profile and you register uh, for that exam. Uh, and that's going to, again, you're going to pick a time and place uh, from one of those authorized testing centers. Now, another tip to remember is when you register for the exams, when you register for your first Microsoft exam, Pick an email address that you want to use for the rest of your Microsoft career. I would recommend not using a work email address. Have a personal email address that you use for your Microsoft certification, and then make sure you use that consistently, because remember, every time you take an exam, you want it to all show up on the same transcript. If you use different email addresses every time you register, you're going to end up with multiple profiles, and you'll have to go through some hoops with Microsoft to get those profiles merged together. Now, with Microsoft exams, you do have the option of either taking it from an authorized testing center, or if there's not one close to you, or you would just rather do it this way, they do offer in-home exams as well. You can go and, and you can uh, set up your computer at home to take a test. Now, you will have to make sure that you meet certain requirements, like the room has to be quiet, no windows. Uh, there's many things that you'll have to do, so you'll have to go through a testing process to make sure that your environment and your system can support taking that exam. And if you do pass all those requirements, you can take the exam at home. It'll be proctored by uh, an online individual to make sure that uh, everything is going well. So you can either take it at a physical authorized testing center, or you might be able to take it at home. Right? Now, when you schedule the exam, another little bit of advice I can give you that, that works for me, and, and I think it, it works for most people, is schedule the exam for a, a time that's good for you. Right? You know, are you a morning person? Or are you an evening person? If you're a, a, an evening person and you just like to sleep in till 10 o'clock, do <sighs> not schedule the exam for 8 o'clock in the morning, right? This is not good for you. Um, it, it's not when you're at your best. So, so make sure you pick a time um, that works with the way you behave, right? Also, you want to make sure that you're well rested, right? Not only pick a good time to take the test, but make sure that you don't stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning doing some last minute cramming the day before the exam. In fact, I will tell you, in my personal opinion, I don't do any studying the day of the exam, uh, and usually that night before, I'll have a cutoff time. Because at this point, if I don't know it, I'm just going to cloud my brain with a lot of information that's not gonna really help me on the exam. So, you know, give yourself a break, make sure you get a good night's sleep, uh, and be well rested the day of the exam. 
If you're taking it in the morning, make sure you give yourself time to eat breakfast or if you're in the evening or the afternoon, you know, make sure you go in, uh, you're not hangry or hungry. Uh, make sure that you're, again, well rested uh, for that exam. Also, you wanna make sure that you arrive early for the exam. Right? You do not want to walk into that authorized testing center at the last minute. They're going to have a procedure that they need to go through. They need to validate your identity. They need to make sure you don't have anything on you that you might be using to uh, cheat on the exam. There's going to be a procedure and there might be people in front of you. So if your test is at 2 o'clock and you walk in at 155, that's just going to make you stressed, right? Because now you're going to try to rush through that or you're worried about getting started on time uh, and it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to be conducive to uh, a good successful test taking adventure. So get there a little bit early. What if you have trouble finding the place, right? Nothing wrong with breaking out Google, Google Maps or something the night before, uh, verifying you know where that location is, right? Um, once you've taken the test, you're going to find out whether you pass or failed. Right? You'll get your score report at the end of that exam. And if you succeeded, great. Right? You, you prepared, you took the exam, you're successful, give yourself a little slap on the back there, uh, do a little celebration, and it's time to move on, figure out what your next step is. If you failed, that's okay. We've all failed exams. You're not going to pass every exam you take. You, you take it in stride. Many places will give you a, um, when you buy your voucher, you might even get a free or a discount on your next exam if you don't pass. So make sure you look for uh, specials like that. But you know, again, if, if you fail, that's okay. Now you've seen the exam and you know what areas gave you trouble and you know exactly where to focus your studies. And it's easier, I think, to study and prepare for an exam after I f if I failed it once. Because in the initially, you've got the entire list of objectives that you're going to be studying from. Right? But once you've gone in and taken that test, and if you missed it by a few questions, you know exactly where to focus your study, go back, prepare, do some more studying, and then reschedule the exam. Don't make the mistake of trying to schedule it for the next day. Give yourself a little bit of time to uh, get over the stress of not doing well in that first exam, to prepare, to go over what you think you did wrong in the exam, uh, and get that information to make you successful for the next time. I see too many people going, trying to go back to back, take an exam, not do so well, schedule it for the next day because they're like, oh, I only missed one question. I'm going to jump right back in there and take it, and they fail it again. And that's a real hit to the ego. So you don't want to do that. Give yourself a little bit of time to brush up on those areas that you didn't do so well on uh, and prepare and then go through this process all over again. Schedule the exam, get a good night's sleep, eat, go in there early and get ready for that exam. Hey, do you have any tips for preparing for a Microsoft exam? Share them in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel for new shows every Saturday morning. I'm Mike Roderick and thanks for watching How to Get Started in IT.